So we just get straight down to business and talk about sperm. I would like to introduce to you Frederick the Sperm, who is completely and madly in love with the oocyte Susanna. Unfortunately, he's not the only one who has let eyes on her. There are a few others, like three million of them, who would also like to meet her. But Frederick has always been a very good swimmer, which is a quite a good ability if you're a sperm cell, I would say. And he gives everything. And in the end, he swims so fast that he outruns all the others and reaches Susanna as the first one. And I really have to mention that it's not due to his size, probably, that he's larger than all the other sperm, but mainly due to his awesome technique. When he arrives at Susanna, he's quite disappointed because he's realizing that he's kind of hitting a brick wall because Susanna is surrounded by an additional layer, which is called Sona pellucida. You can see here a picture taken from the Sona pellucida uh, Sona pellucida in a very good microscope. So you see it has kind of a net-like structure, and here you see the sperm who is trying to penetrate it. So this is also what Frederick is trying, but unfortunately he fails because Susanna is not that easy to get, and among us he's also a little shy and also a little prudish. But um, Frederick is a really smart guy, so he's thinking hard, and he comes up with an idea. Because observing the human species, he realizes that sometimes we quite dramatically change our behavior if we want to impress our person of interest. So he's not really old school, so he's not using flowers or like chocolate or something. He's changing the beat of his tail, which is the flagellum. So here you see a sperm head tethered to um, a glass surface. And if you see the cell, then you might probably agree that's one of the most beautiful cells we have in the human body. So here you can see its flagellum beating in the basal state. If Frederick now comes in contact with the sona pellucida, then something really strange happens, which we call hyperactivation. So you see that the beating pattern of the uh, flagellum dramatically change. It's much more rapidly and much more vigorous. So we can also compare it to the basal level so you can see the strong difference. Unfortunately, this hyperactivation is not enough. It's not a coincidence that I draw a head here on a Frederick's head because the head of sperm are covered by an additional layer which is called the acrosome. And I stained this acrosome here in green, and here in blue color comes from staining of the DNA in the sperm head. When Frederick's head now comes in contact with the sona pellucida, you see that it's strongly um, diminished. So here it's even more gone, and here the sperm head now completely lacks the acrosome. By somehow getting rid of this acrosome, something like molecular zizzes are released, so we call them hydrolytic enzymes. And those hydrolytic enzymes then digest the sona pellucida like the enzymes do in the stomach with your food. And by combining this acrosome reaction and this hyperactivation, Frederick then has a chance to penetrate the sona pellucida and meet with Susanna. That's the point where my research comes into play, because it's not known how this interaction of Frederick with the sona pellucida is evoking this change in behavior. It was proposed that both this acrosome and this hyperactivation are controlled by an increase in the intracellular calcium concentration. So to measure that, I'm using a method which is called calcium fluorometry. So I'm using a calcium-sensitive fluorophore molecule that consists of two parts. So we have a calcium binding domain and the fluorophore domain. And by binding this calcium, the molecule changes its structure and thereby emits fluorescence. So this fluorophore I now load into Frederick. You can see here. And then I can detect an increase in calcium by an increase in fluorescence. This here is a movie of a sperm cell that has come in contact with the sona pellucida. Unfortunately, the sperm cell is too big, so we can't really see the head, and also just parts of the tail here. So this blue color here 
is the basal fluorescence of the dye. And you see that when the sonar pellucida is added, then the fluorescence brightens up. So this indicates indirectly an increase in calcium concentration in sperm. So it is indeed true that interaction with the sonar pellucida um, leads to an increase in calcium. And we said we're not that strict on that, so. Um, <laughs> And the problem is now that this increase in calcium happens in the tail in sperm, and the interaction with the sonar pellucida happens in the head. So there is something happening downstream that leads then to this activation of this calcium influx, and that's what I'm working on. I think in the end, Frederick is not really interested that his calcium concentration is rising or that he's hyperactivated or acrosome reacted. The only thing he's interested in that he finally has a date with his one big love. And eventually, those two also fertilize each other. And you can imagine, since we all sit here, that they from then on live together happily ever after. Thank you. Okay, give a big hand to Melanie.